Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I wanna help you if you're the sort of player that's struggling with a lot of different injuries, or you get a lot of pain when you play, because that can be extremely frustrating. Obviously, it prevents you from improving, but it's, as much as anything, the loss of enjoyment for not being able to play tennis in the way that you want. But it's an area that I've got a lot of experience in. Before I became a full-time tennis hacker, I used to specialize in helping people to rehab from chronic pain so they could get back to playing sport. So what I wanna do is teach you about kind of three what I class as very simple things that you need to make sure that you're doing in order to prevent injuries and to get rid of pain and then talk about some of the slightly more complicated things that you might need to work on and you might need to address as well. I hope you find the video helpful. Um, if you do, give me that thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. And obviously if you've got questions or comments about the things that I talk about in this video, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. The first thing that I need to explain is the difference between pain and injury, because most people kind of think of them together, but they're actually very different. And the research is really clear on this. You can have a whole lot of pain without any tissue damage whatsoever. It is very common for players to have a lot of knee pain, then they go and have an X-ray and they go ahead and have an MRI and expecting to find different things, and they can't find anything wrong. And the reason that that can happen is that pain is a protective mechanism created by your brain in response to perceived danger and to perceived threat. And your nervous system can be threatened by things that aren't actually specific injuries. Now, obviously, players do get injured as well. If you use an example of Alexander Zverev in the semi-final of the French Open, when he went over on his ankle, that is a horrific injury where there is structural damage to ligaments. So that is a real injury. But a lot of the time when players are experiencing pain on court, it's not related to an injury. It's related to an overprotective mechanism by the nervous system. Now, I'll place a link in the description to a video by one of the top pain scientists in the world to help you understand this on a deeper level. But what I wanna do now is talk about three basically foundational things, things that I class that every single tennis player should do on a regular basis and things that they should kind of make sure those criteria are satisfied um, to try and address any pain that they've got within their body, but also to really kind of bulletproof them against actual tissue, tissue injuries as well. The first foundation of both playing without pain and preventing actual injuries is to make sure that all of your joints are moving properly. So to do, do daily joint mobility exercises. The reason that this is so important is firstly, we'll start with pain. As we've said, it's a protective mechanism created by your brain in response to perceived threat. Well, your joints contain movement receptors. Those movement receptors send information back to your brain. So as you play tennis, all of your joints should be sending information back to your brain. But if joints aren't moving properly, they don't send information back to your brain, now your brain starts to think there's a problem because you're, you know, you're split stepping, you're moving around the court, all these things are going on, but maybe the joints in your feet aren't sending information back to your brain. That's gonna be scary. It's expecting to receive information. It doesn't receive it. So now maybe it creates some pain in your foot or your knee or your hip or your back to try and protect you, to stop you doing tennis when the joints aren't moving properly and sending correct information. The same thing is gonna go on um, with the hand or any other part of the body. There's a lot of forces that go through your hand and your wrist when you play tennis. If the joints in the hand aren't moving properly, your brain might want to create hand pain or wrist pain or elbow pain or shoulder pain to get you to stop playing tennis because it's not receiving information back from the joints. Now, if we want to think about joint mobility from an injury prevention perspective, all of this information sending back from the joints forms part of the feedback loop. So if we go back to the feet, if you're running out to the side of the court, you hit a shot, you roll to the outside of your ankle and the joints aren't moving properly, they don't send information back to the spinal cord properly, the reflexes that activate your muscles and prevent you from tearing ligaments might not work in the way that they should. So this is a potential injury risk as well. The same thing from the wrist. If some of these smaller joints aren't moving properly, the reflexes that help to switch on your muscles and make your muscles work properly, might not be working properly, and then that means you don't have the muscular strength to help protect these areas. So for a pain, from a pain perspective and an injury prevention perspective, the first thing that every tennis player should do is make sure that they're mobilizing all of their joints on a daily basis. It's a great thing to do when you wake up. It's a fantastic thing to do as part of your warm up, and it can also be a really useful thing to do during your cool down. 
The next thing that I consider to be a foundation of playing without pain and preventing injuries is going to be to make sure that your nerves are moving freely and are sending good information. Now, in case you don't know, um, nerves basically carry information away from the brain to muscles and then from the muscles and from the skin and from the joints, etc., back to the brain. Nerves cover a lot of different distance and sometimes they get stuck to surrounding tissues. An example you might have heard of is carpal tunnel syndrome. So the muscles that run through the wrist can get stuck within this area. And when that happens, that can be a major cause of pain in the hand and the wrist. So there are simple drills that you can do to make sure that that area is unrestricted. So potentially I could do a median nerve drill where I'm just trying to mobilize this nerve and make sure it's not stuck in and around this area. I could do an ulnar nerve drill again to make sure that it's not stuck in and around this area and that's going to feed into the injury prevention as well because if the nerves aren't carrying good information to the muscles the muscles potentially won't be able to contract as strongly and that in itself can um, mean that you're not able to protect, protect yourself, which can lead to tissue injury. So both from a pain perspective and an injury prevention perspective, it's a good idea to do regular or semi-regular nerve mobilization work just to make sure that everything is moving efficiently in exactly the same way that we want to do regular joint mobility work. The final thing that I'm going to class as a foundation for both playing without pain and for injury prevention is to do with the muscles. And when it comes to the muscles, um, strength is going to be the key. Your brain is pretty smart. It just wants to protect you from harm. And if you're playing a sport like tennis and certain muscles aren't strong enough to handle the stresses that you're placing on them, your brain can give you pain as a protective mechanism. Now, when it comes to strength, there are certain areas that are going to be really important. It's really important to have strong feet and ankles because obviously split stepping and doing all the things that you do in tennis places a lot of stress through the feet and ankles. So making sure that they're strong is very important for preventing foot pain and knee pain and hip pain and back pain. It's important to have strong legs, obviously. It can be important to have a strong core, but if we move kind of up the body a little bit further, one of the most commonly injured areas is gonna be the shoulder and we spend a lot of time doing this and using the big muscles in our shoulder. So one of the most common reasons for pain and injury is lack of strength in the muscles that stabilize the shoulder. So some of the smaller muscles at the back, the external rotators and the scapular retractors or the muscles that bring the shoulder blade back, it's really important to make sure they're strong. There's a muscle underneath the shoulder blade that internally rotates the arm. It's really important to make sure that's strong to handle the loads that are involved in internal rotation when you serve. It's also really important to make sure that the muscles in and around your hands and wrist are strong because again, the forces that are going through your wrist when you play tennis are very high. So I consider regular strength work on some of these key areas to be a foundation for both not being in pain because you might feel like you've got an injury but just by making an area strong that potentially just gets rid of the pain but obviously when these muscles are strong it then makes you more resistant to sustaining actual injuries so if you make sure that your joints are moving uh, and you do that on a regular basis if you make sure that your nerves are sending good information they're nice and mobile and you do regular strength work on some key areas those are going to be three absolute foundations and in my mind when someone's dealing with injuries you want to make sure those foundations are satisfied first because it addresses the vast majority of problems but there are additional things and complicated stuff uh, that can cause issues especially with pain uh, so we'll talk about those now because of the way the nervous system and the brain function there can be things going on underneath that are contributing to the pain you experience when you play and increasing your risk of injury, things that you might not have thought about before. One of the most common ones that you find is issues to do with the visual system. Now you've heard me talk a lot about vision if you've watched my other videos in terms of performance because you need to be able to process information quickly so that you can react quickly. You need to have good eye movements so you can watch the ball onto the strings. So vision is important from a performance perspective but it's also really important from a pain perspective. This is in large part because the part of the brain that creates eye movements is also really important for regulating pain but it's also to do with the type of threat. 
small deficits in the visual system can be very threatening on a subconscious level for your brain. You're running around the tennis court, your brain can't quite see what's going on. It might not want you to do that, so it might create, create pain as a protective mechanism. And the same thing goes for your balance system, the vestibular system that lives in your inner ear. This system communicates with your eyes and communicates with your spine and the muscles basically in the whole of your body and between your eyes, your balance system and proprioceptive system, that's how you navigate the world. It is very common though to find people with problems with the vestibular system and not only does this create issues with ball tracking, it tends to cause the brain to want to protect you because if the balance system isn't working very well, you're at a higher risk for falling. Now, if you're a relatively high level tennis player, you probably don't feel like you're gonna fall over, but it's not about what you think on a conscious level, it's about what the underlying parts of your brain that deal with this kind of tough uh, stuff think. And it's very common to find deficits in tennis players' vestibular systems. If you're the sort of player that has back problems after serving, that is a strong indication that's maybe something's going on with the vestibular system. Because of all the rotation involved, it places a lot of strain on this system. If you get issues with your hamstrings, with your calves, with your feet, with your hips, with your knees, often that can point to this system as well. So these are things that if you struggle with pain a lot when you play, that you probably wanna to start to investigate as well. The final thing that's definitely worth me pointing out is the impact of inflammation within the body. So inflammation is a really important thing. If you sprain your ankle, swelling goes into the area to hopefully protect the area to remove any damaged cells. But while that swelling, the inflammation is in that area, it basically cranks up the volume on your threat and danger receptors. So it makes sure that your ankle hurts so that you stay off it while things heal. So that's kind of how inflammation works on an acute basis. But sometimes people get issues with chronic inflammation systemic inflammation that travels around the body. The way to think about this one, if you've ever had the cold or flu, suddenly all of your joints start aching, well that's because inflammation is cranking up the threat, um, cranking up the volume on all of the threat receptors all around the joints. But if you get into a situation um, where you've got a lot of inflammation in your body, now all of the threat receptors in and around your joints can be cranking up inflammation and when people get injuries in their groin and then it's the shoulder then it's the wrist and it's moving around to all these different places often that can be underpinned by some kind of inflammation maybe going back to the digestive system or the type of food they eat or something like that so we've got those three foundational components we've got making sure the joints move we've got making sure the nerves move and we've got making sure that muscles are strong enough that often takes care of things for most people but then sometimes we do need to investigate this other stuff like how the visual system is functioning the balance system and potentially looking at more complicated things to do with nutrition the reason I wanted to make this video for you is because I meet a lot of tennis players who are, are really struggling with pain they feel like they've been to see everyone they've seen doctors and physios and chiros etc but then when you start to kind of ask them about this stuff most of them have never been told this information and nobody's ever gone through and assessed some of these other systems. So I wanted to make this uh, video just to let you know that that is stuff that is possible if you've got issues and you want to learn more about addressing it. Um, what I'm gonna do is place a link to a web class down below. Uh, that web class is gonna go into a lot more detail about this stuff works. So in terms of what I've described here and if you then it makes sense what you watch on the web class it will give you the option to kind of uh, book a, a free strategy call with me and we can see if potentially there's some work we can do together to make your body feel better on court because I've got a whole program where I work with players both for improved performance with brain-based training but a lot of it is about injury prevention and getting people out of pain so they can get back to playing tennis but I want you to have been through the web class and understand what's involved before we chat on the phone but if that's interesting to you I'll place a link down below and I'll place a link up there obviously uh, in the meantime feel free to check out my other videos I've got some that show different vision training drills and mobility drills that you potentially might get some help from as well if you've got any questions or comments about what i've talked about here leave them down below i'll get back to you as quick as i can